Monticello survives today almost 200 years after Thomas Jefferson's death in 1826, thanks to the initiative of the civic-minded Levy family and ultimately the Thomas Jefferson Foundation. How and why did Monticello's ownership pass outside of Jefferson's family? He died in debt owing $107,000. His executor, his grandson, was forced to sell just about everything Jefferson owned to pay his creditors. At an auction on a cold day in January 1827, most of his belongings, including enslaved men, women, and children, were dispersed to many buyers. A few years later, James Barclay bought the plantation house and some of the surrounding acres, farmed them, and in 1834 sold Monticello to Commodore Uriah Phillips Levy. Born in Philadelphia in 1792, Levy was a fifth generation American, a Jew, and a U.S. naval officer. He fought against flogging and anti-Semitism in the Navy and admired Jefferson's belief in religious liberty. I consider Thomas Jefferson to be one of the greatest men of history, he wrote. Levy became a preservation pioneer before the historic preservation movement existed, 19 years before Anne Pamela Cunningham formed the Mount Vernon Ladies Association to save Mount Vernon. Uriah Levy owned and cared for Monticello until his death in 1862. Ownership and stewardship of Monticello shifted to his 27-year-old nephew, Jefferson Monroe Levy, in 1879. Levy, later a three-term U.S. congressman from New York, like his uncle, protected Monticello, resisting modernization of the historic structure. He allowed visitors to tour the house and grounds and read the Declaration of Independence every 4th of July. In 1911, the idea of making Monticello a public museum emerged. Maud Littleton led a movement urging the United States government to acquire it, initially offending Levy. In 1917, a tentative agreement was reached but World War I stalled the plan and no action was taken in Congress. After the war ended, two different women's organizations took up the cause. The Thomas Jefferson Memorial Association based in Richmond, Virginia, and the National Monticello Association in Washington. In 1923, Southerners, New Yorkers, and members of the women's groups banded together to form a new organization the Thomas Jefferson Memorial Foundation. Incorporated in New York, the foundation dedicated itself to purchasing, preserving, and maintaining Monticello as a memorial to Thomas Jefferson and his ideals. After raising $100,000 to make the first payment to Levy, the foundation assumed ownership on December 1, 1923. The sale also included Jefferson objects, for example, the great clock in the hall, lighting fixtures, a capital from the United States Capitol, and some furniture. The foundation's first president announced its momentous launch at a celebration at the University of Virginia at the end of that year. Sadly, Levy died three months later in March 1924. In 1924, the first year of Monticello's continuous operation, the foundation welcomed over 20,000 visitors. In 1925, a National Educational Committee was formed and events brought national attention to Monticello and Jefferson. Jefferson's carriage even made a public appearance in Philadelphia. Serious, still ongoing restoration began with the repair of the great clock in 1927. Jefferson descendants early on generously began to lend and donate their precious family relics. Building upon the stewardship of two generations of the Levy family and the early educational and preservation activities of the Thomas Jefferson Foundation, Monticello thrives today, still dedicated to its original mission. 
Informed by scholarship, the Foundation shares an expansive story about Jefferson, Monticello, and all of those who lived and worked at this important historic site.